Have you ever wondered if eating someone could be a way to save it? What if it was? Nature does strange things sometimes, and today we're going to see if it would work for softshell turtles. The truth is, these creatures are on the brink of extinction, and some people found a way to make money from it. They came up with a brilliant idea. To save the turtles, we need to start eating them. Does that sound like utter nonsense? It certainly does. When it comes to preserving the species, it actually does the trick. Better ask Steve. This weird, funny-looking creature is the Chinese softshell turtle, a vulnerable species of freshwater turtle that's threatened by, yeah, well, a bunch of things. Disease, habitat loss, and most importantly, being farmed for food. Because these are the turtles that people usually pick as an ingredient for soup. Not surprisingly, the softshell turtle is the most common species raised on turtle farms in China. This turtle accounts for over 97% of all recorded sales. Oh, and there are a lot of farms in China where they're raised. According to data from 684 turtle farms, they claim to have had a whopping 300 million turtles in total, selling over 128 million of them every year, with a combined weight of about 93,000 tons. If you look at it in terms of wholesale prices, it's estimated to be at least $750 million. Another Chinese statistic states that in 2008, the annual production of softshell turtles alone reached 204,000 tons. With just under half of China's 1,499 registered turtle farms accounted for, the actual total might be double that figure. And guess what? New farms are popping up. Some of the farms have been in operation since the 1980s, and the industry has been growing ever since. But before we get into the details, let's imagine what these farms look like. They're not your usual farms with cows and sheep. Turtles wouldn't be too happy munching on grass in an open field. That's why turtle farms have these enormous water pools, sometimes stretching across several acres. Steve and I stumbled upon one that covered 20 acres. And believe it or not, there are even larger ones out there. But 20 acres is typically enough to support a herd of a thousand turtles. Pools alone don't cut it. There are numerous indoor facilities on the property designed specifically for turtle breeding. You can find them in separate buildings and they look well, sort of like this, or like this. The design varies based on the farm's scale and the owner's budget. There might even be luxurious marble pools or ones decked out in gold somewhere. And I'm not exaggerating. I mean, it sounds weird, but the thing is, Chinese farmers don't really like to spill the beans about how they do business. That's why turtle farm areas are usually fenced off, guarded by dogs, and under constant surveillance. It's impossible to sneak in there without permission, especially for foreigners. Believe it or not, it wasn't until the early 2000s that the first non-Chinese scientific team got permission to visit a turtle farm. That's pretty recent when you think about how long turtle farming's been around. But even after letting the researchers in, the owner of the farm refused to say how many turtles were kept on the farm. That's because he had turtles stolen from him before and apparently he didn't want to attract any more potential thieves. It took a bit of persuading, but he did provide the number with the condition that it wouldn't be made public in China. And you can understand him. There's a lot of money in this industry, so people are willing to do a lot of things for turtles, even resort to crime. Those thieves who stole the turtles thinking they could breed them are in for a big surprise. They'll need to steal a couple million more dollars to make it happen. Now back to getting the farm set up. Besides everything else, we've got to make sure we have storage spaces and the right equipment for pumping in oxygen. That means generators, specific pipes, and drainage systems. Lots of stuff. And all this will cost a considerable amount of money. Oh yeah, keep in mind the personality of the animals you want to breed. Turtles, known for being a bit timid, usually spend their time in hiding, except during meals. To ensure their well-being, provide shelters that are peaceful, comfortable, and secure, like this one. See for yourself. Turtles, especially if there are a lot of people around, try to stay either in cover or as close to it as possible to hide quickly. Notice how each pen has its own cover, some with water and some without? They raise turtles here that aren't always in the water. They like to roam on land, too. So farmers make sure they have dry areas. Additionally, greenhouses become essential because turtles can't grow in the cold during winter. To address this, each greenhouse needs to maintain the air and water temperature between 86 and 89 degrees Fahrenheit. Roughly speaking, the overall budget for a single small farm amounts to approximately 130,000 yuan, which equals 18,570 US dollars. Now that we know what goes on at these turtle farms, let's figure out how they work. 
Besides spots where grown-up turtles chill, there are also places where they hatch. Typically, these nesting spots are in higher, dry areas. After the females lay eggs there, these eggs are very carefully collected and placed in a separate protected incubation area. Here they are, just dug up and kind of tiny. I think they're smaller than chicken eggs. For a while, the eggs incubate in these containers at ambient temperature. Then it's finally hatching time. The baby turtles are put into these plastic tubs where they continue to grow. By the way, don't worry about the water being murky. It's actually ideal for turtles. Once the little ones grow to around three to five inches, they move them to ponds. It's interesting that turtles aren't exposed to any light whatsoever, neither natural nor specialty lamps. They're typically kept in nearly complete darkness until they're in the pond. As they grow, these turtles eat a mix of small fish, shrimp, and special turtle food. Interestingly, different turtle species are raised on the same farm, with the more expensive ones treated to superior quality meals. So much for social equality. Turtles spend some time in indoor ponds until they get big enough, then they're moved again. These ones are just about ready to leave the farm. The grown turtles are put into crates and sent off to be sold. The end. Raising turtles is more complex than just dealing with the costs, and I'll tell you why. Let's take the most profitable turtle species. Every year, the female lays only one clutch of five or six eggs, and it takes about 80 to 85 days for them to hatch. So you get one jar like this. A baby turtle will need about three years to reach a weight of two pounds, the point at which it can reproduce. For commercial purposes, it's even longer. Turtles must weigh 11 pounds, which takes around five years. It's quite a long wait. What about other countries? Turtles aren't only raised in China. In fact, Japan's considered the pioneer of soft-shell turtle farming. The first farm was established as early as 1866. Around the late 1990s, Thailand became a hot spot for breeding Chinese soft-shell turtles, with roughly 6 million turtles hatching on Thai farms every year. Turtle farms can be found in the USA, the Cayman Islands, and even in Europe, like in northern Macedonia. However, these don't grow soft-shell turtles so we won't go into that. You might have noticed that turtle farms are quite different from traditional farms. Think of them as a series of pools and adjacent structures where people look after the turtles until they reach the right size. But over in China, there's this farm that's really different. I mean, not your everyday turtle kind of place. In these photos, you can see a part of the largest farm in that country. Here alone, you can find more than 10,000 turtles. Why so many? These turtles are bred for either the food market or to extract ingredients for medicine. Some are fortunate enough to become pets. The farm bears the beautiful name Gardens of 10,000 Turtles. There are nine floors, and they're all dedicated to turtles. I'd even say it's a turtle temple. Actually, why are turtles so popular in Asian countries? I mean, what do they even do with them? Well, this is how turtles arrive at a food market in China. In China, turtles are a big deal. If you stroll through a regular Chinese market, you'll find turtles everywhere. Soups, eggs, and even bones ground into medicine. People think turtle bones can help live longer for some reason. Turtles are just lying on the counters, just like that, next to dried snakes and other important ingredients for Chinese folk medicine. Turtles are a favorite in Chinese cuisine, especially soft-shell turtles. They're highly valued as a delicacy, even if it looks, well, not very delicious. Don't you agree? Chinese people have been eating turtles for a really long time, since the Zhao Dynasty in China from the 12th to 3rd centuries BC. Back then, only the richest and most noble could afford to have turtle as a meal. Around the 5th century AD, people started seeing the soft-shell turtle differently, viewing it as a kind of medicinal food. Ever since then, it's been a key ingredient in the well-known turtle soup. In Japan, soft-shell turtles are stewed with hodo noodles and served as a delicacy during winter. Meanwhile, a significant number of Koreans avoid eating turtles due to a cultural taboo stemming from traditional Korean shamanism. Over in Asia, people are pretty open-minded when it comes to their meals. Farms there sell animals for different purposes, and some even deal in young turtles that are later resold at a higher price after growing bigger. The most remarkable thing about turtles is the supposed healing properties they possess. People claim that things like turtle soup, jelly, pills, and tonics labeled as turtle essence contain stuff that can treat various illnesses, like rheumatism, heart problems, and even cancer. And it's not just these soft-shelled turtles that are thought to have these healing properties. In Laos, a very rare golden coin turtle, believed to cure cancer, can fetch over $1,200. 
All you have to do is catch one turtle and sell it to the right people. $1,200 is about three times the average per capita income in this country. But like I mentioned, people don't just eat turtles in Asia. Actually, people in Europe and America were big fans of eating turtles. They picked up this habit from the Caribbean natives back in the days of exploration and colonial times. Here, for example, is the Galapagos giant tortoise that walked the decks of the U.S. warship Albatross back in 1891 until its services were required at the dinner table and it wasn't there to take your order. It's easy to see the reason. Sailors used to keep turtles alive on ships as a handy food source. It's like having giant canned food on board. Over time, these turtles made their way to Europe and became a fancy treat for the upper class, especially in Britain. The turtle soup trend even crossed the ocean to the United States, where it became a popular dish during the early Independence Day celebrations. Nowadays, when it comes to the U.S., turtle soup is a dish that seems to have faded from people's memories. Mentioning that eating turtles used to be a holiday tradition might surprise people today, but just 50 years ago in Florida, tourists could still enjoy turtle soup, turtle steaks, and even turtle burgers. People in the Caribbean have been savoring green sea turtles for centuries, adding them to many different recipes. Today, people in Europe and America might find the idea of turtle soup kinda cruel, but back in the day, three centuries ago, it was like a fancy dish for the aristocrats in Europe. The English elites got a taste for turtles around the 1720s, and by the mid-1700s, turtle soup was like the top-tier cuisine. It got even more interesting after that. Turtles, believe it or not, ended up in factories for, well, you can guess, they got turned into canned food, kinda like beef. They ended up in cans like this. A fancy dish that used to be exclusive became a hit for everyone, causing a huge increase in turtle catching. The demand grew fast. By the way, as I said, Europeans and Americans enjoyed eating green sea turtles and caused a major drop in their population. By 1973, green sea turtles were classified as endangered. Today, it's illegal to hunt them or harm them in any other way. But let's get back to the main question of today's video. How can eating turtles save them? Large-scale turtle farming in China is doing a great job of keeping up with the appetites of Chinese foodies. As demand and supply balance out, prices drop. Back in the mid-1990s, wild soft-shell turtles went for 500 yuan per pound, while farmed ones were at 200 yuan per pound. Fast forward to 1999, and the price of farmed soft-shelled turtles had fallen to 60 yuan dropping even more to just 15 to 16 yuan by 2009. It's a simple yet smart approach. People will keep eating turtles thinking they're a delicacy and super healthy even if they're in danger. It's hard to change that and it might wipe out turtles entirely. But think about it. Maybe these farms are the reason we still have soft-shelled turtles in the wild. Prices have fallen so much that regular people no longer find it profitable to catch and sell these turtles. Even though people are still catching wild turtles and trying to sell them at crazy high prices, experts think this is just a leftover habit. They predict this will stop on its own pretty soon. Well, and if poachers do wipe them out and wild soft-shelled turtles do become extinct, there are so many of them on farms that the population can easily be restored. We can just pay the farmers and release the adult turtles into the wild. There are some risks, though. Turtle experts warn that turtle farming puts additional pressure on wild populations. That's because farmers usually believe that turtles from the wild are cooler, so they try to catch them for breeding to work. Setting free turtles raised on farms isn't a walk in the park. For one, they might carry diseases unfamiliar to the wild. Plus, life outside captivity can be tough for many animals dealing with predators and all that. One thing's for sure, the giant turtle of the species Raphidus swinhoe will be safe and sound. It's the rarest soft-shell turtle in the world, and it'll never end up on anyone's plate again. Why not? Because there are currently only two to three turtles of this species left in the world. Back in 2019, a Chinese zoo lost its last female turtle who was over 90 years old. Even before that, it was pretty obvious the species was doomed. Now all we know for sure is there's one male turtle left and two others whose gender's a mystery. I guess the turtles know who they are, but Steve came across different info. Back in 2020, when they found a wild female of the same species in Vietnam, animal advocates were thrilled. They thought this could be the key to restoring the population. Unfortunately, it didn't go as planned. The wild female was found dead in early 2023, and it looks like she didn't get the opportunity to leave any offspring. So this species of turtle is what scientists call functionally extinct. 
Even though there are still a few around, the species no longer exists because none of these turtles will be able to reproduce. Even if by some crazy chance those surviving turtles could have babies, their offspring would have no genetic diversity. So they would have ended up with a load of genetic issues and probably wouldn't have lasted long. Unfortunately, even with people trying their best to fix the situation, it seems like it's too little too late. And if you're asking the real question of why is this species extinct, you likely already know the answer, hunting. These turtles are casualties of our insatiable appetite. It made sense to catch those turtles since they were larger and consequently more expensive. Another universal reason was the destruction of the places where these turtles called home, forcing them into extinction. I got really curious about how people were fixing the problem. What exactly were they doing? Turns out there's quite a bit of material on this. They brought this guy in this box to the zoo when they figured out there was only one female left. The task was clear. Make baby turtles ASAP. But no attempts at baby making panned out, even though the couple made it a bunch of times over a few years, the female never managed to lay any fertile eggs. Baffled by the situation of this unfortunate couple and eager to rescue the species from disappearing, scientists went for a more unconventional approach. They decided to go with artificial insemination, where they had to take the genes from a 100-year-old male and inject them into the female. Alas, it didn't work out. This is the last photo of the female before the procedure. She died just 24 hours after her fifth attempt at artificial insemination failed, never becoming the savior of her species. The turtle just didn't wake up from the anesthesia. Even 24 hours of resuscitation efforts didn't help. Now, saving a whole species from extinction is a serious business, but sometimes the efforts from outsiders can seem downright ridiculous. When they tried to collect the male's genetic material, turns out he just wasn't in the mood. I mean, seriously, not feeling it. So they had to resort to some manual stimulation, adult toys, and even a bit of electricity. All in safe doses, of course. Sending electric zaps to a 100-year-old creature might be risky, but desperate situations call for desperate measures. The goal was to save the species at any cost. It wasn't until a bit later that they realized that the turtle's reproductive organ was damaged. Oops. Just so you know, using adult toys on turtles for science isn't a new thing. They usually do it to find out the gender, since some turtles are just tough to figure out. You can usually tell what gender animals are without being a science whiz. Just check out a lion's mane or, you know, peek under the tail. It's pretty straightforward. Most turtle species genders are typically easy to figure out based on shell characteristics or color. Yet, for those species where females and males aren't easily distinguishable, a biologist and PhD candidate devised a unique method, which, yes, includes intense vibration. Turtles, just like other reptiles, amphibians, and birds, keep their private parts tucked away in a place called the cloaca. If nothing exciting is going on down there after 10 minutes of stimulation, you're dealing with a female. You know, I think you've already got it figured out. I don't want to show it. Turtle farms actually have some surprising uses. Back in the 1980s in China, they introduced apple snails from South America for aquaculture. These invasive snails were supposed to be raised, sold, and eaten because they were cheap and easy to grow. But here's the kicker. Nobody bothered to check if people actually wanted them. Turns out, Chinese farmers found out really quick that people weren't into the bland texture of apple snails, so they just let them loose in the wild. Great decision. What could have possibly gone wrong? Today, these snails have become the ultimate pest. They actively eat the roots of any plants. These snails are causing trouble for plants like lotus, water chestnut, and rice. They're also munching on frog eggs and other snail eggs, posing a threat to local ecosystems. To top it off, these snails multiply very quickly. Guess what? Turtle farms can fix this. In the Philippines, they found out that soft-shelled turtles love munching on snails, and they're doing a great job at it. Why not have farms lend turtles to get rid of snails on each other's land? It can fix both the invasive species trouble and the high food costs. While turtle farms make weapons from invasive species, they're also breeding hybrids. When these turtles end up in pet stores, their new owners soon realize something's not quite right. The turtles look odd. So on certain farms, you'll find turtles of different species kept together, even though scientifically speaking, they're not the same species. Love knows no bounds. Turtles mate anyway and give birth to hybrids.
When scientists examined soft-shelled turtles in pet shops, they stumbled upon four new lineages that hadn't been identified before. Doing what they do best, the researchers kept digging, checked out some farms, and spotted signs of crossbreeding there. Over time, these new lineages made their way into the wild, originating from the farms, which is a bad thing. According to scientists, hybrids might contaminate the genetic makeup of local soft-shell turtle species. Offspring that's contaminated could end up weak and less suited to their habitat, possibly leading to the extinction of the original, pure species. You don't need to study genes to notice something peculiar about turtles. In the Philippines, there's a growing worry about an invasion of turtles eating local fish and acting all invasive. Interestingly enough, this troublemaking species happens to be the same soft-shell turtle we've been talking about in this video. The Chinese soft-shell turtle was classified as an invasive species introduced into the country in the 1990s. Today, this reptile poses a danger to the local wildlife and is a nuisance to the multi-million dollar fishing business. There are so many turtles that you can easily walk into the water, wave your hands around, and stumble upon a couple. So people are facing a tough choice. Some might think it's a good idea to round up all these turtles and ship them off to China for consumption. On the other hand, keeping a few turtles around that won't cause any trouble is also an option, especially since they're a vulnerable species. Isn't it fascinating how, in one place, folks are working hard to protect a species, while in another area, that same species decides to take over? And it's not just the Philippines dealing with this. A decade ago, two Chinese soft-shell turtles showed up on a beach in Quincy, Massachusetts. Back then, experts were really worried that even a few of these potential troublemakers could disrupt the whole aquatic food chain. See you later!